Hi, I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Eye dominance is a subject that is often misunderstood and not taught as well as it could be. I'd like to cover eye dominance today so that you have some tools to improve your own shooting, your own gun fighting, and those of your students if you are an instructor. First, what is eye dominance? Eye dominance is a matter of your visual cortex, which is in the back of your cranium, deciding which of your eyes it wants to pay attention to. Generally, you have one dominant eye most of the time. In my case, I'm right-handed and right-eyed, which makes it very easy for me to shoot with both eyes open. Some people have a situation that's called cross-dominant, where they may be right-handed and their left eye is dominant. This is easy to deal with by the simple expedient of just rolling the gun over into the left eye. Some people also advocate turning the head so the left eye is behind the sights. I'm concerned about this, that in a life or death situation, you may have trouble turning your head away from the threat situation. So my preference is to tilt the gun into the eye. Eye dominance is a matter of your brain deciding what eye it wants to pay attention to, and it'll generally pay attention to the eye that has better acuity, the eye that sees better. In my case, my right eye is substantially better than my left eye. Eye dominance can change from moment to moment, though, because once again, your brain is trying to get the best information it can in its environment. And it may be that something exciting happens in my left visual field, and my brain will decide it needs to pay attention to my left eye. So for a moment, my left eye will become dominant until something changes. Either that exciting thing happens to change into my right field of view, or more likely, I'll turn my head to get my good eye onto the exciting object. Lighting can also affect eye dominance. I've had situations in the evening or at night where uh, there's adverse lighting conditions, and it may be that my right side of my face is in darkness, and there's a light source over on my left, and my, right, my left eye is catching the light, and it is the one that becomes dominant because it's got better information. Eye dominance can also change over your lifetime. As your eyes change, one may become more acute than the other. When you're young, maybe your right eye was the stronger one and your right eye dominant. As you get older, maybe your left eye becomes has better acuity and your brain pays more attention to your left eye. Some people don't have a dominant eye there. Both their eyes are in good shape and these are the people when you see them behind a gun, they're doing this. They can't quite figure out which eye they should be using. I'm going to give you some simple tips and tricks that will enable you to deal with eye dominance yourself and in your students. Now you might be saying, well, what's the big deal? Why don't I just close one eye and solve all the issues? If you look at bullseye shooters, the Olympic style shooters, they actually will occlude one eye with a, a blank card and have just a lens with a little diopter in front of their one eye that they're using. And that's fine if bullseye shooting is your goal. But do you want to go through your gunfighting career with one eye occluded? I'm sort of stunned to find that fully 20% of the instructors that I teach themselves shoot with one eye closed. And they teach their students that this is acceptable also. I believe that in a life or death situation, you're not going to be able to close one eye. That under the stress of a life or death situation, both your eyes are going to be wide open as your brain is frantically trying to get information it needs for your survival. So can you see that there might be an issue that maybe I'm cross-eye dominant, but I solved that by closing my left eye when I'm shooting, and that's all fine. But now there's a situation where my life is on the line and both my eyes are wide open and I go to shoot and now I'm seeing two guns, I can't get a good sight picture. The good news is this is very easy to solve and I'm going to give you a few situations, a few solutions that will enable you to deal with this. But first we need to figure out which of your eyes is dominant. There's a few different tests. My preference is to keep my hands together like this. There's a hole between the webs. This occludes a lot of my field of view. 
and put that down, look at an object like the camera lens, and then very quickly with both eyes open, bring the hands up. And one way to determine which of your eyes is dominant is to close one eye if the camera moves out of the hole, then that is the dominant eye. Or you can just slowly bring the hands back, keeping the object in view until your hands touch your face, and then it becomes obvious that I am indeed right eye dominant. You can also use an OK sign, or you can use a finger, and then, once again, close one eye. If it stays, that's the dominant eye. If you close the other eye and the object moves off the finger, or the finger moves off the object, then that's the non-dominant eye. Now, because this is a matter of your brain deciding which eye it wants to pay attention to, it is trainable. You can train your brain to decide which eye it wants to pay attention to. And I'll show you how to do that. You're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need some glasses, and you're going to need something like some chapstick or a piece of scotch tape. Either of those will work. And what we're going to do is occlude a little part of the lens on the non-dominant eye. And to show you how well this works, I'm actually going to change my eye dominance for you. I'm going to occlude my right lens. So I'm going to take a little bit of this chapstick and smear the lens. You don't need to smear the whole lens, and it doesn't have to be big gobs amount of chapstick. All you're trying to do is make it so that your eye is fuzzy. And because it's not seeing well anymore, your brain will decide to pay attention to the other eye. So in the previous test, when I did eye dominance, my right eye was the dominant eye. The only thing I've changed is I've occluded the lens a little bit with a little bit of chapstick. It's a little blurry. I can still see the camera, but it's blurry. My brain now gets a better view out of the left eye. So let's see what happens when I do the eye dominance test. And you can see that I'm now looking through my left eye. Now obviously, you're not going to go around with your glasses uh, messy all the time. Think of these as training wheels. You use these when you're shooting, and because it's a trainable thing, you won't need these forever. And as a matter of fact, you'd be surprised at how quickly you will discover you don't need these anymore. You'll be able to shoot with both eyes open and concentrating on whichever eye you want. I think it's important that you teach both of your eyes. You should be able to switch from one eye to the other at will. Because while I might be right eye and right eye dominant, under most circumstances, there may be a time when I have to shoot left-handed and left eye dominant, especially if I'm shooting a long gun. While it's easy to deal with cross-eye dominance by turning the pistol into the dominant eye, that doesn't work with long guns. I'm somewhat dismayed because the majority of instructors who are dealing with a cross-dominant student when it's time to shoot a long gun and they can't get their dominant eye behind the sights will teach them to shoot off their support side. Because I find that handedness is much stronger than dominant eyes. And that dominant eyes, it's easier to switch than handedness. So I'd rather have the student shoot off their strong side and teach them to shoot with their non-dominant eye when they're shooting long guns. Now once we've got the situation under control where we can shoot with both eyes open using our dominant eye, we should learn to use the non-dominant eye, particularly when we're dealing with long guns. Because while I may be shooting right eye, right eye, right handed, something may come up where I have to shoot left handed around a corner or, or cover, and I want to use my left eye. Once again, this is very trainable if you practice with it. Another way to train dominance, and it's the way I taught myself to uh, shoot with my left eye, was I closed my right eye. Obviously, through default, my left eye now becomes dominant. And it's very easy to aim with only one eye, even though it's my non-dominant eye. Then I would open my right eye. 
and immediately the right eye would take over, being strongly dominant. And I would see, instead of the sights, the side of the pistol. So I'd have to close the right eye again, get everything lined up again, open, and I'd lose it. The right eye would take over, close it, get the, right, the left eyes lined up again, and open, close, open. And in a surprisingly short period of time, four or five repetitions, I noticed there was a hitch before the right eye took over. The left eye kept the sights for a quarter of a second or so. The more I did that, the longer that hitch went, until all of a sudden, the right eye wasn't taking over anymore. And I was able to maintain the left eye sight alignment with the right eye open. And we're to the point now where I can switch from eye to eye with both eyes open. This is very trainable and really in a very short period of time. So use those two tricks I've given you. The glasses, and this could be sunglasses or your clear shooting glasses, just mess up the lens a little bit. Vaseline, chapstick, a piece of scotch tape. Don't cover the whole lens, just the part of the lens that can see the gun. So just this little bit right in here is plenty. Use this while you're training. Before long, you won't need it at all. So hopefully that has been informative and gives you some tools and tricks for yourself to deal with your eye dominance and for your students if you're an instructor. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.